Dyslexics get a bad rep for their memory, especially their short-term memory, also called working memory. However, according to research, that's an unfair generalization. My name is Arie, I'm a dyslexic in the field of education studies, and let me tell you all about it. So I would like to start by showing you a model of the working memory. Then I'm going to show you in which area dyslexics typically have trouble and in which area they're performing equally as well as non-dyslexics. And at the end of the video, I want to give you, if you're a dyslexic, the opportunity to prove to yourself that you do not have a general problem with your working memory. It is only one specific area. But first, let's get into the model. So let's say you need to remember something. Then the first station in your working memory is the sensual executive. And that's basically the boss of the working memory. And he or she is responsible for monitoring and coordinating the information. And then there are two employees. One of them is referred to as the inner voice and one of them the inner eye. In research, they are calling it the phonological loop and the visual spatial sketch pad. The inner voice is responsible for written and spoken information. For example, if you need to remember a phone number, then this employee is taking care of that. Then there's the inner eye, and that part of your working memory is responsible for visual and spatial information. It is important for orientation and navigation, but also for certain motor skills. It enables you to judge how far you are removed from other objects in space. So, for example, your inner eye is keeping you safe while driving. Both employees are talking to the central executive, and he or she is then sending the information into long-term memory. What dyslexics have trouble with is the phonological loop, which means remembering dates, phone numbers, um, those kind of things, and of course, the, the correct way of spelling a certain word. However, the visual spatial sketch pad of dyslexics is intact, and we don't see any difference between dyslexics and non-dyslexics in this area. So if you're not sure if this also applies to you, then have a look at this little test. It measures the working capacity of your uh, inner eye, that part of the short-term memory that we talked about. And um, yeah, the whole thing is quite self-explanatory. So I'm gonna give you two examples and then the whole thing will be clear and you can try it out. I believe it's a bad idea to make generalizations about the things that we cannot do. So in terms of short-term memory, I wanted to set the record straight and tell you that dyslexics do not have a general problem with short-term memory. Okay, I hope you got value out of this video and I see you in the next one.